there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I know I have been AWOL for a really long time, but I have a new Bible here that I just bought. It's a CSV. This is the translation my new church uses, and I thought I'd get this one. I got it a long time ago when I first joined the church, and I haven't journaled in it. As you can see, it's quite empty. It's a journaling Bible that just has the lines on the sides. There's no blank pages but I'm going to be journaling in Luke today. Many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as the original eyewitnesses and servants of the word handed them down to us. So it also seemed good to me, since I have carefully investigated everything from the very first, to write to you in an orderly sequence, most honorable Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things about which you have been instructed. I have to admit, I have not been a studier of these introductory verses when I read them. I see grace and peace to you. I bring you greetings from so-and-so. All these introductory passages are just like, hey, that's the niceties. Now let's get to the meat. And I just move on. But my pastor brought something to light here that just blew my mind. and and lifted my heart, and I just felt the Holy Spirit moving. So he started off by asking us two questions. One, are the things in the Bible true because they're in the Bible? To which I was like nodding, well, of course, you know, the Bible's true. And he said, or is it that things are in the Bible because they were already true? And at first I thought these sounded very similar. They sounded like shades of the same truth, but they're actually not because in the the early days of the church, they didn't have a Bible. They they didn't have a leather-bound book. They didn't have all the chapters and the verse numbers and everything. They didn't have it printed and it's all in order and, you know, you can sit and read it. Nobody had that. What they had was an account from Luke, an account from John, uh, a book written by by Matthew or by Mark. They had letters to the Ephesians. They had letters to the Colossians. They had individual little scraps of this book we now call the Bible, and they passed them around. And they were treasured possessions of a community. That, that's all they had to lean on. That's all they had to grow their faith from where we have this whole book full of so much that we take for granted. We don't read, we don't treasure. And here they were, you know, dying, sacrificing themselves to protect these scraps of the Bible so that we would have them now. And it it was just a really beautiful way of presenting it. I'll put a link to his sermon in the the doobly-doo down below so you can go watch it for yourself. But for me, this certainty that Luke was giving to Theophilus. Theophilus had hired him to write this account. So Luke went out and interviewed people. He talked to all the eyewitnesses. He talked to the people who saw Jesus walking this earth, who saw him in ministry, who saw him doing miracles. They saw him crucified. They saw him dead. They saw him buried. They saw him resurrected. And he's telling Theophilus, that stuff you believe, it's true. Here's the evidence. Here's my report. And there's the book. And that certainty is certainty that we can all stand on as well. But it's not certain just because this book is in the Bible. It's certain because it was already true before it was even written down. But the writing down happened afterward as a you know historical documentation. This thing happened. And Jesus is who he said he was. I talked to people who were there. They know it. They saw it. And here's the evidence. But this certainty idea is also something that's very near and dear to my heart because in the times when God has told me something, whether it's good news or bad news, when he says it, I am so delighted because I know it's true. Whether it's a hard thing he wants me to do or whether it's something I already wanted to do and I already agreed with him, like when he says to do something, I'm like, okay, thumbs up. I'm I'm right there. Whatever it is you want, I'm I'm yours. And when he told me it was time to to take a break from Bible journaling, it was really hard. 
because that's not a bad thing. But sometimes God needs you to take a break from good things. You know, it doesn't have to be a bad thing for him to say, this is not the season for that. I've spent the last, you know, months, year, I don't even remember when it was that I, I pulled back, but I spent this time doing written journaling instead of art journaling in my Bible. I haven't even written in the Bible. As you see, this one is blank. I've just been reading it and keeping a separate journal because I've been waiting for him to say, yes, you can draw in your Bible again. And this was the day he said, yes. And when he says it, I know in my knower that I know, as one of my former pastors used to say, I know in my knower that I know that it's true, that God said it, and anything can happen to try to shake me from that. But when I know it at that level, then there's, there's no stopping whatever it is that God wants to do because he said it, and I know that he did. There's no shades of, well... Is it because I wanted it and I wanted him to say it and I'm kind of making it up in my head? No, I know this is from him. And I, I felt very much released into this is a new season coming. Maybe not immediately. I don't know what this looks like, but he gave me permission to journal in this new Bible. And I want very much to see what he's going to do next. I don't know if it's going to mean more Bible journaling videos. It may not. And I'm sorry to give you that news. I'm going to follow him with whatever it is that he says I'm going to do next. But my church is going to be doing something new in 2023 that just aligns so perfectly with something I've had a passion for for a long time, which is having a Bible journaling group that's based on the sermon of the week and spending time during the week journaling about what God said in that moment, and then getting together as a Bible journaling group and sharing what, what it is that God said. And I'd be there to help them if they needed to figure out how to draw whatever they wanted to draw, but that each person would come with their own perspective on that message. And I was very excited about that years ago, and I couldn't get a group who would do that. I got a lot of people who would sit and stare at me blankly when I said, well, what did God say to you? They, they just had no answer. And I realized people just don't know how to hear from God, how to hear specifically what he's saying to you in a scripture or in a sermon or whatever. And my church wants to start tackling that in a different way. They want to provide more weekly resources for church members and more Bible study and that sort of thing. And I'm like so excited. It's just like, uh, like things are aligning in some way that I, I don't even see yet. I did talk to my pastor and I said, we need to have a meeting so we can talk about this and pray about it together because I want to know how I can be part of this and feed into it. But I am rock solid certain that this is something God is moving in. And I can't wait to see where he takes it. I, I don't really know what that's going to look like. It may or may not involve public YouTube videos. So please be patient. I don't really know what's going to happen there. But if you would like to join a new venture that I've been kind of dabbling in for the last couple of months, join the Art Venture community. It's either an app, you can get to it on an app, or you can get to it on the web. Both of them work just fine. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo to that, but there is a Bible journaling group there. And I'm going to start sharing a little bit more as I talk to my pastor there and as I start getting back into journaling. So if you want to hear more about that, maybe listen to my pastor's sermon that's linked in the description down below and journal what God says to you, and then go share that in that group. And we can kind of do an experiment to see how this works, trying to get our individual perspectives on one sermon. All right. I will see you guys again sometime. I don't know when, how soon, or in what format, but take care and be blessed.